Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 53 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about server.transfer and the difference between server.transfer and response.redirect. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 51 and 52 of this video series. The following are the different page navigation techniques that are available in ASP.NET. We discussed about the hyperlink control in parts 13 and 51 of this video series and response.redirect in part 52. In this session, we'll discuss about server.transfer. Let's look at a simple example of using server.transfer. Here I have a very simple ASP.NET web application project which has got two web forms, web form 1 and web form 2. And if you look at the web form 1, it's got a very simple design here. There is an H1 tag which shows, you know, the heading as this is web form 1. And then I have two text boxes uh, where the user can type in their name and email and then two button controls. And in the code behind, at the moment we don't have any code. The idea is that when I click this button transfer to web form 2, you know the user should be navigated to web form 2. And if you look at web form 2, look at this. On this web form, we are asking the user to enter their name and email. And on web form 2, we are trying to retrieve that name and email, you know, which the user has entered on web form 1 and display them in these label controls here. And then here he, we have an H1 saying that this is web form 2. Let's see how to achieve that using server. Uh, transfer technique. So obviously when I click this button, I want to move the user to webform2.aspx and obviously to do that we can either use hyperlink control or response.redirect and we have seen how to do, uh, you know, how to navigate users to different web pages using those techniques in the previous sessions of this video series. In this session, we'll see how to use the server.transfer. The server object has got the transfer method. And if you look at the transfer method, you know, this method is expecting a string parameter. And this parameter is the path of the page where you want to navigate the user to. In this case, we want to navigate the user to webform2.aspx. So double quote tilde which indicates the uh, current web application root directory forward slash web form 2.aspx that's where I want to navigate the user okay now let me run this all we are doing is we are navigating the user to web form 2.aspx when we click that button okay so as the page loads notice the URL we are on web form 1.aspx now I'm clicking on this transfer to web form 2 button look at that I am on web form 2 and look at the URL it still says web form 1.aspx but at the moment we are on web form 2 so the redirection is happening without the user knowing that he is on a different web form okay now what we want to also do here is along with transferring the user we also want to move these values now there are several ways to retrieve these values on the destination page okay so how do we retrieve those values on the destination page so which is webform2.aspx so when the page loads whatever data that I type into these two text box controls should be retrieved on this webform2.aspx how do I do that now when the web form loads, this web form 2, when this loads on the web server memory, you can actually use the request objects. On the request object, there is a property called a form. And if you look at this form, look at the help text here. It says gets a collection of form variables. So when this page is getting loaded, you can use this request.form object to get the form variables of the previous web form okay so request dot form and if you look at what is this property returning look at the intelligence it returns system dot collections dot specialized dot name value collection so it's going to return us back a name value collection pair that's present in system dot collection dot specialized namespace so let's use a variable of that type to hold the return value so system dot collections dot specialized dot name value collection so let's call this as collection or to give it a meaningful name I'm gonna call this previous form collection okay now we know that in the previous form we have a control with ID if you look at the ID of this text box control the ID of this one is txt name 
And similarly, if you look at the ID of the next text box control, it's txt email. So what we can basically do is to retrieve the text that the user has typed into these two text boxes, we can actually refer to that text boxes in this name value collection pair. So this is this object is a name value collection pair. So now if I open a square bracket, there are two ways of accessing that. You can either use an integral indexer, but that's not readable. So I'm going to use the name of the control here. The name of the control is, if you notice, it's txt name is the name of is the ID of the text box so we are going to use that so txt name that's it so now if you look at what this is going to return this is going to return a string back which is nothing but the value that is present in that control and all I want to do is set that as the text for label so we have a label on this page label name dot text is equal to whatever is returned from this control and similarly, I want to retrieve whatever is present in the email text box and set that as the text for label email. And where are these labels control present? These label controls are present on this web form. So if you look at these, these are the IDs, label name and label email. Okay, that's it. Now let's go ahead and run this. So obviously the web form loads and notes the URL. We are on web form 1.aspx. Now the user can actually type something into the text boxes and then when he clicks the button transfer to web form 2, we will be, let's call the name as Prajim and email, let's say Prajim at prajimtech.com. Now, when I click this transfer to web form to look at the URL, it's currently web form 1.aspx. I click transfer to web form 2.aspx. I'm still on the same URL. The URL doesn't change in the browser, but I am on web form 2. And look at the values we are able to retrieve them, Prajim and Prajim at prajimtech.com. Now, so when we use server.transfer technique, it's possible to retain the values, the posted form values. Okay. And uh, now, if you look at the way we are redirecting the user, we are using the server.transfer method. So from web form 1 uh, to transfer the user to web form 2, we are using server.transfer. Now, this method has got another Boolean property, preserve form. And by default, this is true. If we don't specify it, it's going to preserve the form variables. But if I set that to false, look at what's going to happen. All I have done is I have used another overloaded version of this transfer method and then passing false to this second parameter okay so let's run this now and when the form loads when we enter some data into the web form and then click that button transfer to web uh, form 2 you know it's not going to preserve those values so I'm going to enter test and test in a name and email click on that look at that I don't retrieve I'm not able to retrieve them and that's because you know you have said don't preserve the form values Okay, now we have seen one way of retrieving the values using, uh, you know, request.form property. Okay, now there's another way since we are using server.transfer technique, another way to actually retrieve, uh, you know, the previous form values is by using the previous page property. Now, this is a web form, and if you look at this web form, this web form is inheriting from the page class. So, this page class has got a has got a property called previous page property and we can use that previous page property to retrieve the values that the user has typed into these text boxes let's say how to do that so obviously the page class has got a previous page property so if you look at this property what is this property returning back it's returning a page object back so I'm gonna say page let's call this previous page is equal to page dot previous page Okay, now if previous page not equal to null, so we are saying if previous page not equal to null, then what we want to do on the previous page, find a control. So we can use this find control method on the previous page. So if I am coming onto web form 2 and if I am coming from web form 1.aspx to web form 2, then the previous page for web form 2 is web form 1. And on web form 1, we want to find a control, you know, with ID txt name. 
and txt email and how do we do that we use the find control method and if you look at the find control method it, ex it is expecting the id of the control that we want to find in this case we want to find txt name text box and we know that this find control method is going to return a control back but we know we, we, we will get a text box back so I'm going to typecast that to be of type text box and then we can actually retrieve the after we typecast it to text box we can actually retrieve the text property from that and set that as the text property for the label control that's it and along the same lines we can retrieve txt email control and that's also a text box but in this case I want to set the text of the email okay so now we run this so we are using the previous page property um, you know basically to retrieve the values of the controls on the previous page so we are currently okay let's navigate to web form one let's run that and when the page loads let's say test is the name and test is the email I click on transfer to web form to look at that I am able to retrieve the values and an interesting thing to note here is that even though you pass false to, to preserve form parameter of server.transfer method you know we are still able to retain those values because we are using the previous page property okay now this previous page property is initialized only if you come by a server.transfer method or when you do a cross page postback we'll be talking about cross page postback in a later video session but if you land on this page using response.redirect then this previous page property will be null and you wouldn't be able to retrieve you know values from the text box and um, I mean from from these text boxes okay so let's see if that's the case so let me insert a row below and then let's put a button control here and when I click this button let's say I want to redirect the user instead of server.transfer I can do this response.redirect and I can redirect the user to webform2.aspx so let's copy and paste that there okay let's run that actually let's put a breakpoint so that we know uh, you know the previous page property is actually null so what we are going to do now, right now is when we click that button when we land on this page we are trying to retrieve the previous page property and store that in this previous page variable now since we are landing on this page by clicking this button look at that when I click this button you know we are redirecting the user using response.redirect technique okay so let's put a breakpoint on uh, webform2.aspx.cs I'm gonna click this button and we are using response.redirect to land on webform2 let me press F10 look at the previous page property it's actually null okay so we are not able to retrieve the form values that's why it will basically be empty okay but if you remember we haven't typed anything let's type just to make sure I click the button I land on this page I press F5 and look at the name and email they're still empty we don't get those form values back okay so that's server.transfer so the important things to keep in mind you know this this is a very common interview question what is the difference between server.transfer and response.redirect just like hyperlink control and response.redirect method server.transfer is used to navigate to other pages or sites running on the same web server server.transfer cannot be used to navigate to sites or pages on a different web server what happens if you try to do that you will get a runtime error okay using hyperlink and response.redirect we can redirect the user to any site or any page whether if they are present on the same web server or on a different web server but when we use server.transfer we can only redirect the users uh, you know uh, to pages or sites running on the same web server now let's say I have a button here on this web form one transfer to external website let's double click that so that the event handler is generated and let's use server.transfer method to transfer the user to prajimtech.com so http colon forward slash prajimtech.com and I want to go to forward slash home dot aspx page 
So prezimtech.com is definitely not hosted on my web server on my laptop. So it has to go to a different web server. So obviously this is going to throw a runtime exception. Let's see if that's what happens. So when the page loads, I'm clicking this button transfer to external website. Look at that. I get an error. So server.transfer cannot be used to navigate to sites or pages on a different web server. And server.transfer does not change the URL in the address bar. And we have just seen that. And server.transfer is faster than response.redirect. As the redirection happens on the server in in just one request and response cycle. We have spoken about response.redirect in the previous session. So if it's a response.redirect, look at that. The client makes a request to the web server. You know, when I click the button in the button click event, we have response.redirect. So the web page post back request will be received at the web server. And then the web server will just send a response header back. And then the client will then initiate a new get request for the new page. So there are two requests. And then the web server sends the response for the you know redirected page. So obviously response dot redirect, the redirection is happening in two request response cycles. Whereas in server dot transfer, you know, you click the button, the page posts back, the redirection from the transfer rather from web form one to web form two happens on the server immediately, and the new page response is sent back to the client. That's why if you notice the URL doesn't change because the redirection happens on the web server. But whereas in the case of response.redirect, the redirection is happening on the client. The client will issue a new get request after the post back request. So if you use response.redirect, you have an extra round trip involved to the client. Whereas when you do a server.transfer, you don't have that extra round trip. That's why server.transfer is slightly faster than response.redirect. So server.transfer is faster than response.redirect as the redirection happens on the server in one request response cycle, whereas response.redirect involves two request response cycles. With server.transfer, the form values from the original request are preserved, and we have just seen that. But if you use response.redirect, you know, the form values, the original request form values are not preserved. So these are some of the differences between server.transfer and response.redirect. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.